Another GDR objectified field trip. Today we find ourselves in Chemnitz, and if that name doesn't ring a bell, perhaps its previous name will. Karl Marxstadt. The city kept the name Karl Marxstadt for 37 years, from 1953 through to the spring of 1990, when residents voted overwhelmingly to return to the old name. While it was easy to erase the name from the city, remnants of the East German era are ever present all through the city. During the 20th century, Chemnitz was a major industrial center key in heavy machinery manufacturing, and as such an important cog in the war machine of the Nazis. The city suffered greatly under Allied bombing raids and 80% of the inner city was destroyed. This actually played into the hands of the new East German rulers, however. They were interested in leaving their stamp on the city, and they certainly did so here in Chemnitz. And you only have to go steps from the main station, which is right here over my shoulder, to find the first example of East German public art to survive. This is the August Kempfer August Fighter Memorial, created in 1977 in memory of the victims of a demonstration against the war which was brutally put down by the German army. This was part of the East German state's attempt to link itself to the struggles of the workers throughout the modern German era. Behind me, is one of two main axes that the GDR era left for the city. This is the Street of Nations, and it was designed primarily as a shopping street, and there are plenty of remnants of the GDR along here, including public art and sculpture. Intersecting with the Street of Nations was Karl Marxstadt's second main axis, the Karl Marx Allee. Erected in the 1970s, it fittingly has a huge monument in honor of the man who gave both the street and the city their names. Insofar as people have heard of Chemnitz, it's probably because of this sculpture behind me. This 7 meter 10 tall bust of Karl Marx weighs 40 tons and is the second largest of its kind in the world just after another found in Ulaanbaatar. The sculpture was created by Lev Kerbel, a Soviet master of socialist realist sculpture. Unveiled in 1971 before a quarter of a million people, it sat in front of what was the SED party headquarters. Behind the bust here, we see a huge bronze wall relief in which the slogan, Workers of the World Unite, 
is visible in four languages, French, English, German, and Russian. Another key project in the socialist branding of Kalmarstadt was the building of the Stadthalle, or event hall, and inter-hotel, along with city park, between the years 1969 and 1974. Located directly across the street from the Karl Marx bus, the city park is home to a number of notable pieces of socialist art, including science as a productive force, this pillar here, dignity, beauty, and pride of the person in socialism, and finally, mother and child, all works from 1974. While exploring the northern end of what was the Karl Marx Allee, I came across a couple of apartment buildings from the late 50s, early 1960s, and was pleased to discover that in their pedestals they had lead inlays, art typical of the era, the first featuring a folk dance scene, while the second featured a race. While preparing for this video, I came across this archival photo of the artists at work on the project. Second from left, a familiar name, Johannes Belz. Before Marx, however, Chemnitz had another pilgrimage site for socialist saint, this one dedicated to Ernst Thälmann, the Weimar-era leader of the Communist Party, murdered by the Nazis in Buchenwald. Thälmann's bust still stands in the city, as you see here today, right by the castle pond. It was unveiled in 1966. Walking through Chemnitz, it is amazing how much public art from the GDR era one still finds. For example, this four-piece installation based on five poems of praise written by Bertolt Brecht. It was commissioned by the party and unveiled for the GDR's 23rd birthday in October 1972. From Karl Marx Allee, it was then a short walk across the downtown to my next destination. This is a pretty remarkable find. We are in the park of the victims of fascism, and behind me we have a Marx Engels statue from 1957. It was brought to this spot in 1965 when the square here still bore the name of these two thinkers. Once I finished up at the Marx Engels monument, I made my way across to the park to Chemnitz's City Theatre. I'd heard there was a lot of GDR art here, and I wasn't disappointed. When the theatre opened its doors in 1980, public art played a key role. A number of works were commissioned for the grounds outside the theatre, including Siegfried Krepp's Wrestlers, Love Nest by Volker Bayer, and Pondering by Zabina Gritzemek. A fourth work, Two Sides of the Person by Rüdiger Wilfrott, originally sat in the foyer of the theatre, but was later removed out into the courtyard. And looking at it, I can't help but wonder if this was because of the artist's decision to tackle what was a very sensitive theme in the GDR, that is, the dichotomy between the public and private person. I'm standing at the corner of what was Karl Marx Street and Station Street, and this is a great place to take our leave from Chemnitz. Behind me, is the bronze relief, Struggle and Victory of the German Working Class by Johannes Belz from 1976. It was uncompleted at the time of his death, but installed a year later. An artist committed to the communist ideal, Belz, pictured here at far left, struggled mightily with this commission. What should have been the crowning glory of his career became an albatross. Belz fell into a deep depression when he was unable to find an adequate artistic depiction of the future of life under socialism. Disillusioned with aspects of everyday life in the GDR, Belts proposed an unorthodox solution, an abstract depiction of the future in a series of waves. Party apparatchiks were not on side with this, and the artist grew despondent. In March 1976, Belts took his own life in his atelier, in front of the unfinished relief he had spent eight long years trying to complete. <laughs>